In this video, we're going to be talking about an important process that happens in our body, which is the flow of blood through the heart. That is how the blood enters and exits the heart. We'll also be talking about the nodal tissue of the heart, which are a group of tissues that literally make the heart beat to its own rhythm. First, we'll start with the flow of blood through the heart by visualizing an image of the heart. So here is an image of the heart. We know that the heart has four chambers, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium and the left ventricle. The right side of the heart is for deoxygenated blood, whereas the left side of the heart is for oxygenated blood. We'll start with deoxygenated blood reaching the heart from different parts of the body. There are two main blood vessels that make this possible, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. The superior vena cava brings in blood from the top part of your body like from your head and your arms. The inferior vena cava, because it is located below the superior one, brings in blood from the lower parts of your body like your abdomen and your legs. So through the superior and inferior vena cava, the deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium. From the right atrium, blood is pushed past this valve which is known as the tricuspid valve or the atrioventricular valve. The tricuspid atrioventricular valve. Tricuspid because it is made up of three flaps like this. And atrioventricular or AV because it is located between the atrium and the ventricle. So past this tricuspid atrioventricular valve, blood moves into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, blood is pushed past this pulmonary semilunar valve, this one right here. Pulmonary because it is involving the lungs, that's where the blood goes next. And semilunar because this makes sure that the blood goes only in this direction, that there is no backflow of blood. So through this pulmonary semilunar or SL valve, blood enters the pulmonary artery, which branches into two. The right pulmonary artery supplies the right lung and the left pulmonary artery supplies the left lung. At the lungs, blood is oxygenated and from the lungs, oxygenated blood is picked up by the pulmonary veins. The right pulmonary veins pick up blood from the right lungs and the left pulmonary veins pick up blood from the left lung. So through the pulmonary veins, blood enters, oxygenated blood enters the left atrium. From the left atrium, blood is pushed past this valve here known as the bicuspid valve or the mitral valve or the bicuspid atrioventricular valve. Bicuspid because it is made up of two flaps like this, unlike the tricuspid which had three flaps. And atrioventricular, again because it is located between the atrium and the ventricle. So past this bicuspid valve, the blood enters the left ventricle. From the left ventricle, blood is pushed past this valve here, which is known as the aortic semilunar valve. Again, semilunar because it makes sure that blood goes only in this direction, that there is no backflow of blood. So past this aortic semilunar valve, blood is pushed into the aorta, which is the largest blood vessel in our body. The aorta then branches into smaller blood vessels and then supplies blood to all parts of the body. So this is the general flow of blood through the heart. We can visualize this in a cyclical manner as well. If you want, you can pause the video right here to understand the flow better. But we'll take a short recap here as well. So the veins that pick up the deoxygenated blood from all cells eventually combine to form the inferior and superior vena cavas. From the vena cava, deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium. And past this tricuspid atrioventricular valve, the blood enters the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it is pushed into the pulmonary artery past this pulmonary semilunar valve. So the pulmonary artery takes the deoxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation. And at the lungs, the pulmonary vein is the blood vessel that picks up the oxygenated blood. It brings the blood to the left atrium. And then from the left atrium, it is pushed into the left ventricle through this bicuspid valve, which is also known as the mitral or the atrioventricular valve. 
From the left ventricle, it is pushed past this aortic semilunar valve into the aorta, which then transports it to all the cells. This is how the blood flows through our heart. Next, we'll move on to the conductance system of our heart or the nodal tissues of the heart. So you must have heard the saying that the heart beats to its own rhythm. Well, the saying is actually quite literal because the heart has specialized tissues that can generate electrical signals needed for the heart to contract and relax. Those tissues are modified cardiac muscles known as the nodal tissue of the heart. They form the heart's conductance system. So this is why the heart does not rely on inputs, the electrical signals from the nervous system to contract and relax. This is why when you're a fetus inside your mother's womb, your heart starts to beat immediately after it is formed. So there are several nodal tissues in the heart. The largest one and the most powerful one is the sinoatrial node located in the right atrium, very close to the pulmonary artery. So this sinoatrial node can generate the electrical signals that can maintain the resting heart rate. Say if you have a heart rate of around 70 to 75 beats per minute, this resting heart rate is set or maintained by the electrical signals generated by the sinoatrial node, which is why this is known as the pacemaker of our heart. This sets the pace of our heartbeat. If this fails, if there is a problem with the functioning of the sinoatrial node, that is when we implant an artificial pacemaker in the heart to keep the heart beating properly. So this pacemaker sets the general tone or the pace of the heart. So from the sinoatrial node, the electrical impulses are transmitted to the left atrium through this Backman's bundle. And then to the ventricles, it needs to reach somehow, right? So from the sinoatrial node, it is transmitted to the next part of the nodal system known as the atrioventricular node. So this atrioventricular node here is located right between the right atrium and the right ventricle. It is capable of generating its own electrical signals, but the signals that it generates cannot set this tone. So it cannot set this 70 to 75 beats per minute. It is much less than that. So when the electrical impulses are transmitted from the sinoatrial node to the atrioventricular node, that is what causes the atria to contract. So from here, somehow the signals need to be transmitted to the ventricles as well, right? That is taken care by a bundle of nodal tissue right below this atrioventricular node known as the His bundle or bundle of His named after the scientist who discovered this structure in our heart. So the bundle of his is also capable of generating its own electrical impulses, but not as much as the sinoatrial node or even the atrioventricular node. So the bundle of his then splits into two branches, the right bundle branch that serves the right ventricle and the left bundle branch that serves the left ventricle. So after the his bundle splits into the right and left bundle branches, it splits into tiny fibers known as Purkinje fibers. So these Purkinje fibers sort of hold the ventricles and they, they are also capable of generating their own electrical signals, but again, not as high as the sinoatrial node or even the atrioventricular node. These Purkinje fibers are the nodal tissues that cause the contraction and relaxation of the ventricles. Now from the image, you can notice something that there are more fibers, more Purkinje fibers on the left ventricular area compared to the right ventricular area. Why is it so? Well, that's because the left ventricle needs to contract with a greater pressure compared to the right ventricle. Because the left ventricle is the one that's going to push the oxygenated blood out through the aorta to all parts of the body and this is done under a greater pressure compared to the right ventricle pushing out blood to the lungs. To generate that amount of pressure, more electrical signals are needed at the left ventricle compared to the right ventricle which is why there are more Purkinje fibers at the left ventricle than the right ventricle. So this is all about the nodal tissue of the heart, which quite literally makes the heart beat to its own rhythm. We'll talk more about the cardiac cycle and how the heart beats in another video.